What is good? We're back. Got uh, the new the New Testament tripod here, as opposed to the old Big Co's of the Old Testament. <laughs> oh, gotcha. <laughs> We had Big Co last week. We got we got Matt back, Matthew and Jason. Was here? What was here on Monday? No, you were here. Yeah, very biblical around here. Um, Jason's not in Bible. I know. I'm just whoa. All right. I don't think. What are we doing today, boys? Neither is Casey. No. Casey is a man, and the Bible would mm, be frowned <laughs> upon. <laughs> what uh? What are we doing today, boys? I keep forgetting. Jason's in the Bible, by the way. Oh, bam! Jason of Thessalonica nailed it. Which which book, chapter, verse? Uh, looks like Acts one or two. Not familiar. Looks like Acts one and Romans. Mm. New Acts text. sent a letter to the Romans. <laughs> Shout out to all my people who grew up in church. All right, <laughs> we're gonna rebuild this episode. That's it's what hot we're in them do. streets. People got some bad fantasy teams, and they are really wanting to rebuild it. They might even have, like, decent fantasy teams, and they still want to rebuild that shit. So we're yeah, here for you. <laughs> People love to rebuild. I, I only draft teams to rebuild. Yeah. That's really the only only way to do It's the whole this. fun of it. I, you Which, know, you know, if you're what, playing in $20 leagues, well, I guess, fuck it. Have some fun. What you want to do is you want to you want to rebuild and just go get Austin Eckler, Derek Henry, <laughs> um... <laughs> Mike Evans, you want those? Tyler Lockett, you want to Patterson. You want to build it around those? Tom guys. Brady. Um, no, but <laughs> it, it does seem like everyone does like to rebuild. They People love, love it. to rebuild. Love the rebuild conversation. Hey, you got to kick. The, you got to kick that can. If depending on you know who you listen to, I'm sure that's probably all they talk about. Is that's just, and, and just maybe that's rebuilding. Maybe because you're giving bad advice, they got to keep telling you <laughs> how to rebuild. You know, maybe you should check out a different show. Um, but. If you it does it would seem a whole lot easier right now to be in the position of trying to win and trading right. for veterans. Right. Like I'm in a couple of positions where like the trading market is so bad that I mm. wish I was going the other way because I feel like the value would be so good yeah. of being able to grab older guys off people's teams. But like, man, it's a, it's a real bummer. But nobody wants anyone who's above the age of like the 26. 27. Yeah. A dynasty. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna just chat a little bit about how you know the 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 kind of basic couple of steps that you go through to start the rebuild process, and then just kind of your ideas of uh, you know the hows and the whats. Which you know I don't think it's anything groundbreaking here, but you know we'll we'll find a conversation somewhere. Well, I want to start off by talking about knowing the format of your playoff system, right? I thought you were- we're totally different. Where'd you think I was going? Just somewhere that had nothing to do with what we were about oh. to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying to keep us on track. People who, if you don't start talking about what the fucking title is within 30 seconds, most people are fucking out. They're already they, there because their time is way too important. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you're not important enough to remember. Uh, <laughs> pop mark eventually. Anything? Uh, anyway, no, you're uh, no, you're. Know your playoff structure. So I got a team where, you know, I had some bad luck and I'm a little, I got a couple old players and I could definitely like start to break some of it down and uh, re- retool it out, right? Uh, not Maybe not rebuild, but retool, you know, get rid of my older guys, get some draft capital. More like a Ravens kind of deal. They're never rebuilding. They're only retooling. Right. But Reloading. in this particular format, you have to win the loser's bracket to get the 1-1. One, one. Mm. So like... I'm I'm not going to sell Tyler Lockett and Keenan Allen, which is a bad time to, to sell Keenan Allen right now, and Alvin Kamara, because if I could get Bajan by keeping them boys, then that's worth it to me then to try and sell and maybe get some later firsts, you know? Which, yeah. that would then lead me to my next question, is like, if you have the 1-1, one, one and you, are, you really need to rebuild and your team sucks, do you make that pick? Or do you try and sell that one one, move back, get a bundle of fucking re- reload your whole entire team? That would m- semi depend on the draft class, but like for the most part, the one sure thing in most draft classes is the one one. If you really want to make a sure bet, and like putting somebody like Bijan on your team, like I'm just gonna go ahead and draft him unless somebody gives me a stupid offer, and then he's just all my team. It's not like the offers are gonna go away or right. anything along those lines. Now, you know. Two, three, four. If you don't feel super strongly about anything, 
feel free to go to go backwards. Uh, I, and I'm from the one, two or one. Three, right. One, the one, four. one, I'll just go ahead and, and I'm drafting unless you make me a crazy offer. Yeah. Um, and, and that's usually a decent bet. And this year it seems like it's going to be a really good one. Um, but then, like I said, if you, you get back a little further, you know, move back a couple spots and keep just picking up a little bit of equity here and there until you get to the spot where, hey, you know, I got it mapped out. I can go back this many places this many times, either in one big one or a few small ones. And I don't want to fall past here and just, you know, kind of have that plan going in on the on the trade back for those guys. That's what it's that's actually important to set up your tiers. Yeah, I just think it's worth exploring a little bit because it's like if your team sucks and you're going to take this, you're going to take this running back. You know, you yeah, gotta build your team around a running back. That no one wants to well, hear that the, shit, the, the, you, right? Because now you can do whatever you want, though. Like you don't have you don't have to necessarily keep Bijan, but the price isn't gonna go down. Like you just mm-hmm. you, like whatever somebody was gonna offer you before that. Now that he's on your team, like he's worth it's, more. It's me and Big Co talk about it all the time. Like make it's, the, trade the cheapest the time to made. make that pick is before the draft pick has a name associated with it. So mm-hmm. once Bijan, which everybody pretty much knows what it is, right? At that point. But there's still I mean, the idea that maybe he fucks it up or maybe. Or, 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 yeah, but that's that's the going to be as sometimes as much as it sucks. If you really want that pick, that's probably the cheapest it's going to get unless you want to wait six months and hope that it flops a little bit. Uh, but as soon as that name is associated and that team moves over to the roster page or that name moves over to the roster page, I mean, the price is, you know, even harder to pull off of somebody's team. So because um, well, they've made that pick that they're kind of attached to it. That sure, point. sure. Um, but you know, on the next, you know, step here of things like kind of the first steps I I think would be, you know, going to your league page, obviously going down and probably, you know, looking for, depending on what you're trying to do, which is most likely sell players right now to somebody who is still trying to win in, in most cases. Um, so, you know, and you're trying to sell off your older players and obviously nobody in your league probably uh, that's in the going to be a top six pick once those older players it's going to be the guys who are in the playoffs um, so you need to go identify who those guys are and then look at each roster and and walk through the roster be like all right i like that guy that guy that guy and that guy on on each one of these and now i'm going to go through and just put together different packages from looking at my standings and i'm going to go over back over to my page and start building trades and i'm um, you know really the next part of this at, at that point when you start sending the offers um, it really comes down to how much time do you want to invest in this process like you could do you you could get as much value as you want to spend time you know in most cases um but you know if if you don't have the time and you're not interested in sending you know 30 offers to maybe get one offer done uh and constantly repackaging and rebuilding and just pulling guys out because you know but when i'm starting a negotiation i'm usually going to shoot you know a little over you know what I what my asking price would finally settle into mostly because I've had so many times where you get that you send that trade and then you get that email and you're like damn he took that shit and we didn't even have any negotiation that means I probably could have got a little more so let me get more and and work backwards and try not to lose him in the negotiations by striking up a conversation and just kind of talking to him you know maybe complimenting him a little bit adding in you know some <laughs> I, it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but you, you just not setting a bet. Like sometimes in message dialogue can get lost. And if you set it up as being a little bit more or tone can get lost. And if you set it up as being a little bit more cheerful and playful, then so like it's in the not com- going to get so as like, ugly. So like in the comments of the trade, just be like PS, you're handsome. Well, yeah, yeah. Like in sleeper, you know, like, when it's when it sends. Uh, I like that move you made or, you know, you. Yeah. Did a great job here. He, he, Definitely or, or utilize like, the comment box is basically to, to like kill him with kindness. It doesn't it doesn't need to be super blatant. Like you don't need to get PS. Super, I love you. Right. <laughs> I mean, you can go that route if That's you want, the, but you just just to just strike up, keep the tone on on the up and up rather than like kill feeling, him with kindness. That's the best way to put it. Kill these right. boys with kindness. And you can you can throw a shot in there, but it has to be a fun dig. It can't be like you know just. You're a Your fucking, mother's a whore. You're a fucking idiot. Your values suck. I can't believe I'm having this conversation with you. Why do I should have never drafted you this guy too, to begin you know? with? And right. I mean, I've done that to people. But right. Like, I mean, you can do that. But, that's, them that but at some point, you're going to lose a trade partner right. for life. They're going to hate. Oh, you, I don't care. You know what oh, I, mean? I don't care. And, and, and if and they still said, I've I've told people before that their trades are literally the worst trades I've ever seen in my entire life, and they still send me trade offers. 
Yeah, it's baby. one thing if people are going after your guy, but if yeah. you're trying to establish something, you know what I mean? You right. have to kill him with kindness. And it's just like that comment the guy's like, well, I, I always kind of just send some bad trade offers out as initial trades. Well, to that point, right? But, that, but, then, I, but then to me, it's just like, I'm not even going to waste my time. Like you're sending me things that are just so bad that you're just trying, I'm just trying to start the conversation. Well, the conversation is going to end because your trade offer was awful yeah, so i'm yeah. just gonna send you another trade a, a, a equally bad offer on my side to tell you that your trade offer was so bad don't send something that's absolutely terrible no i, I no. agree but also you can't send your best offer right i, I totally so agree with that part but don't send if you're some, down sending a one start with a two don't two send twos. me a second for Brees hall and think we're gonna sure, have a conversation sure. i mean that's asinine and you know i, I don't really you gotta know send the first and then do it and then be like no i'm not i can't trade you that for a first but you at know, least it's not you super know, if you insulting. want to get the conversation started, you could send the one and the t the one for Brees and say, "Hey, are you interested in moving Brees Hall?" And then, you know, get it going. And like, you know, I, I try to get them. I try to send something or get a conversation going so they can send me something so I can kind of gauge where we're at here and see where the values is because you know see who they include in the trade offer, who do they like, right? Who, who they do they after? think is expendable on their team? Because then some guys you're tr doing trade offers with them and that guy's a no go, and then on other teams they're like they're ready to throw him in as a kicker. You know, so it's the value of how other players value their guys is all relative and whether or not some people think the trade was garbage. Now, if you're playing with a bunch of guys who are savvy vets, then, you know, if the trade's garbage, that's just an asshole move. Some people's just values stink because they haven't been doing it for that long and they don't really understand. Um, and, and sometimes if you can get the kindness level up, you can kind of explain your position. It's just a lot of times what I like start to try to do is explain, like not basically tell you my guys are great and your guys stink, but you know, just to kind of help me out here. And, and some people are, you know, will, will go, oh, yeah, that does make sense. And other people will basically, they don't want to hear it. Um, yeah, I don't want to hear it, but some people need. Yeah, well, I, I, well, because, I hate, well it's different also, because if I was sending a trade with you, I wouldn't, there wouldn't be. You know, have I understand be, the right, values right. of players. But I hate people trying to, like, use car sales, meaning their players, like, huh? Like, no, no, that, see, that's the opposite of what I'm saying to do. Like, oh, yeah, you should trade for, um, uh, uh, who was the guy who was ahead of Justin Jefferson the year that Rager? No, the year that Jefferson got drafted. Um, uh, Rager was definitely in that class. Rager on the Vikings. Oh, uh, Adam Thielen? No. Was it Osborne maybe? No, I, I, I know who you're talking about. It was yeah, He's got a weird, he's got a weird name. Um, yeah. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Yeah, someone should, oh yeah, you should trade a third for him because he's ahead of Jefferson on the depth chart. Like, don't fucking try and... It, Use car sales me. You're you won't hype up all your players no, no, to try no. and trade them away. That's that's and not really what I'm it's suggesting. it's kind of hard trading players that don't really matter. It's it's you know you kind of some leagues you can and you almost need like the savvier leagues where they kind of know that guy is a little bit of a sleeper player. Mm -hmm. But in like your home leagues with your dudes that don't you know your boys that don't know everything, it's hard to sell them like someone random for like a third. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's Yeah, for instance like we just I just started playing Superflex with some guys who have haven't played that much Superflex in most of the league. And like their quarterback values are fucked up. So they send me they send me trades and I'm like I, I, we go and, and I just try to explain to them like look I wouldn't give you you know this guy for that. Like we're talk this is where this guy is kind of drafted. This is kind of where I see the value like you know, I'm fine with trading him, but we need to, you know, we're, we're more up here than, than here. And if that's the end of the conversation, it is. And sometimes it's, oh, okay, we can go, you know, that makes sense. We can elevate it a little bit. The player um, I was thinking of was old BC Johnson, by the uh, way. Yeah, yes, that is correct. Um, the boy BC. So, you know, uh, some of the, then the next steps are obviously, you know, you're trying to look at the, the top six or bottom six, however you want to look at it. The guys are going to the playoffs rosters, and you're trying to obviously move some of your old players and get draft picks and or um, players that aren't helping them out players like that aren't helping out, or, or like just younger players and you have a vet and, and a pick um, Javante is a good one Brees right. well, that's is a, a little more expensive of a good one but sort of a whole different conversation of like yeah that's a good point like you go right to the IR spot or like the healthy the unhealthy guy and you try to get the, Traylon, the down on the value there Jameson. right and a little extra so like yeah. those are those are all good examples of of that stuff right now. Like as soon as Hollywood hit the IR, Hollywood. I went right to every team. This isn't even a rebuilding thing, but like I went right to every team that had Hollywood Brown and started sending offers 
to see if I could get something going because that team, if it was a winning team, if it wasn't a team that was very good when he went down, I let it ride. But yeah. a winning team who just lost a big time player for him, maybe they're like, hey, we can get him back. I need to replace And we'll wait guy. six weeks or maybe I don't have six weeks. So I can give you a little under market value and a start, a decent other good starting receiver. And I, maybe I can steal Hollywood from you. So that's a move. I, you know, I definitely don't hate, uh, making, um, uh, but for sure, um, you know, the injured play, like if you, if let's say, um, you know, it, obviously you don't want to trade away Jonathan Taylor. You're in a full on rebuild though. You need to tear everything apart. You need to get as much as you can. Um, Glad so, you didn't sell him when we were telling you not to sell him. Because so, then he came out and busted off a 75-yard touchdown run and was back, baby. And 66 Value points. went right back up. But that's when you, on a shitty rebuild, if somebody has Brees on a good team, that's where you can go and it, you can sell Taylor for Brees. And, and like, I'm pretty, I forget exactly what it was, but I think we just sold Taylor for Brees a one and a two. Wow. Maybe not the two. Maybe it was a three. Maybe we swapped or something. But we got Brees. Even Brees in the one. We got Brees in the one. Deal. Now it's a team that's that's going to be good. You know, it's not. It's going to be a you know later. But like that was a case where the team needs a complete rebuild. We need all the pieces we can get. We don't feel like we're downgrading all that much between the running backs, and we're getting a little younger. One guy's coming off an injury. But in that case, like, bam, that was a move that we made. And plus, we're getting the plus asset of more picks and another shot to fill out a roster yeah. spot here. So. You know, there is a case of going after on a rebuilding team, going after, uh, you know, a high end player and, you know, but keeping it semi on, you know, not blowing it up for peanuts, uh, which, you know, you don't want to do. But to that point, if, you know, if you don't have a lot of time, we've been talking about the minutia of all the trades, then, you know, it is okay to lose a little bit of value mm -hmm. on a rebuilding team. Here's how you here's how you rebuild. Win every trade, crush every draft pick, and don't get any players injured. Boom. <laughs> For sure. That's how you fucking rebuild. But I mean it is okay Cut. to not, we're done. To not be the you know, the just if you don't have the time and you don't want to put in the time to try to just muscle every drop out of everything, it, it is okay. I mean, I'm not saying give players away for peanuts, but just send, you know, at that point I'd be sending stronger offer off the rip trying to just get it tightened up and big, if they if they big accept right turn, away big co's turning in his grave already. oh no if there's oh, one no. thing big co oh, will no. make time for it's to find the right trade i got the message right here from big co we were talking about this last night i mean we, he literally said almost the same thing verbatim so. you gotta so you do have to be willing to lose a little bit on these trades so that you don't get stuck getting nothing for it if the player's like getting old and fading right so you you do have to be willing to lose a little bit in the trade, knowing that you're going to lose a little bit. I kind of, you know. That's a long text. Well, I, we were chit-chatting, and then we just talked out on the phone. But if you're going to rebuild, sell everything over 26, no matter what, even if you got to sell at a little bit of a bargain. Hmm. First line. Wow, big co selling a bargain. Well, I mean, if you're if you're on a full on rebuild, then it, it it is okay to not win. I mean, I'm not saying you need to get fucking. The <laughs> your wiener kicked in on the trades here but like you know you just you don't maybe don't need to be so you know aggressive in trying to squeeze every drop out of something you can just try to get the deal done with you know still getting a pick and a and a younger guy and for you know a veteran and a okay starting veteran or something like that um so you know i i don't think that's you know people get very caught up in having to win every trade or, or they won't trade and the you know if you are going to sell someone really good, though, that's maybe older, put them on the block. Let people know that you're trying to sell Austin Eckler. Don't just sell them to the first person that makes you an offer. Yeah. You know, you got to shop them a little bit. You got to send some trades out with Eckler in them to a bunch of people. Put them on the block. Put it in the message group. Hey, got some offers for Eckler. Anybody want to come beat the offer? You know, yeah. even if you don't have any fucking offers for Eckler. Like, right. let it be known if you're selling a, a great player like Eckler who's going to... Because if I see Eckler get sold for, like, not much, and I'm like, I'll, I'll, I would have... The fucking thing I hate is when it's like, I would have paid you so much more for that guy. Yeah. I didn't even know he was available. Right. What are you doing? Idiot. You could throw him on the block or just send some, you know, just send a, a little bit of a highball offer to everybody to let him know that, hey, you know, you could... We could get Eckler in a deal here. Um, start those negotiations. But like I said, I mean, I don't think you need to win every trade. You know, 
you're going after you're trading your older guys you're targeting you know some younger guys you're selling a lot of running backs unless they're you know drafted this year basically um or last year rather uh you don't want a whole bunch of old running backs on your team anybody like he said anybody over 26 ish you could pretty much say hey we should we should probably get something for you mentioned javante and some some injured guys as as people as you can go after but like you know you got to get rid of those guys you got to try to pick up receivers and draft picks um and you know i like i like tight ends i like to try to grab tight ends in trades um I've got a main piece, but I've got a team with a bunch of uh, it has JT on it, but I've got a bunch of like uh, I've got the James Connors. I've got David Montgomery. I've got Gibson. I've got Jacobs. But the problem with that team is, is it's that it's quarter point per carry and I only have to start one wide receiver. So I'm okay. Sounds like you're not ready to rebuild. But I but I feel like I feel like I'm good. I'm I'm getting towards that cliff. The boys are like 24, 25, you know? But I'm getting towards that cliff. I have no idea where Jacob Sanders or Jacobs or Sanders is going to be next year. Mm-hmm. I don't know what Gibson's role is going to look like next year. But you know, all those guys are good players. I, I agreed, but you know, I think they're good players. But does they end up? But how? But what's the? I feel like at some point it's going to go like from this to this. It's what just does your gonna, wide receivers look like? Not not good. My mm-hmm. wide receiver one is 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 Terry. Who else you got? Uh, not much. Nobody. Who do you got? Like Jacoby Myers, Donovan Peoples Jones. What kind of draft picks you got? I don't have a first next year. What happened? I traded it away. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any good wide receivers and like three running backs. What else? What, what do you else? Mean, you like got? three running backs. You said you said Jacob Sanders and no, I mean Gibson. This is Superflex. No. If you're, if you're, I've got Kyler, and it's, I've got Kyler. All those, all those guys could go if it were me, and I, I felt like I needed. to. But I'm in third place. The problem is you can't get good value for those guys. No one cares about them. No, They're just I like mean, once you have them, you just no. But you have okay, money. so what do you want to do? You want to sit around in middle with those guys on your team? Yeah, my and wide, be all right, my, my or you running back, get a little less than face value. For running back: guys? Sanders, Gibson, Montgomery, Connor, Jacobs. I also have Algier as well too. I have a Rob. I have Mike Williams. That's my I have Mike Williams, Jacoby Myers, Who's your tight end? DPJ, um, Dulcich, Bellinger. We've got some younger guys at tight end. I had Fant when he was still. So I, no I had 23 first. You got your second. You got all your 24s? Uh, I believe so. And you're in third. I'm in third place. How do the teams one and two look? Pretty strong. Because I you have, can start all those running backs. Yeah. That's why you're in third. I have a 24 first. I have a 24 first, and I don't have any. I have a fourth. I have a second and a fourth next year. Yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, you can you can ride that out and then sell whichever one. You can just start sending out the offers for all those guys, and whichever one you can sell at the highest mark right now, I'd, I'd probably get rid of one of those guys and then try yeah. to sell the other two in the offseason. Whenever they sign with a new team, get a little value spike and people will be excited about it. Yeah, Lee, the teams one and two are both nine and one, but the second place team is only four points ahead of me in points scored for the year. Yeah, Monty's about, did you say Montgomery's on that team? Yeah, but he's, but I'm not going to sell him. Yeah, he's about Herbert's, to Herbert's on IR, IR for the next four yeah, weeks. Yeah, no, he's, I'm saying he's about to get a nice little bump. Yeah. As long as they actually hand it to the running back. Um, but yeah, I, I know it was a, a big aside there, but it's just like, those those like middling twenty like there's twenty four to twenty six yard running backs, where they're still producing. I've, it's just a hard time trying to sell those guys. Yeah, like if I you know, I, but you only you only have to start Terry, that's right? What I've been doing, right? I can see why you're in third. I mean, it's a bummer you don't have your first next year to go get a, another good player, you know? Yeah, but maybe you could. I think I sold it. Getting D Hop a couple years ago, and then I sold D Hop last year when he got suspended. I sold D Hop for Williams in a second. So you have two twos? No, nah, I traded one of the twos away to get somebody this year. These fucking fruit flies, man. Are they invaded your house or I got something going on? You got an infestation. Uh, I want a hell of an infestation. You know, I noticed an infestation <laughs> everywhere I look, in fact. <laughs> It's the cockroach talking about humans. Today's episode brought to you by Dale's Dead Bug. Is that what it is? Are we on the same page, Men in Black? No. 
Hmm. Alrighty then. Well, Edgar skin is hanging off your bones. <laughs> we'll go back. To what did you just say? <laughs> Men Edgar, in black. Your, Edgar, your skin is hanging oh, off your okay. bones. Oh, okay. All right, let's get back on track here. Yeah. Anyways, but like I said, I don't think you need to tear that thing down and rebuild. I think you I'm need not to tearing it down and rebuild, but just like I just feel like the off season, I'm gonna have to make some. I'm gonna have to make some serious moves. Maybe, yeah. I mean, pre those guys signing with teams or post, you gotta wait till one. Of them. What well, if it's a bummer signing? What if Monty goes over with fucking Ramondre and is stuck in Patriot Land? That, that value goes down, right? Maybe, course, obviously. Can't be that many great landing spots for these middle aged running backs. Never. I feel like one of these guys is gonna sign with the Rams. Maybe. Unless Kyron does something these last couple of weeks. Kyron's probably not your workhorse. I like Kyron. I've got him on my team too. Kyron could be pretty good, but he's probably not. You need you need someone else there. Toting some of that load. It ain't Daryl Henderson. All right. Well, what else we got? We're 25 minutes in. Should we? You got some more theory, some more strategy? Should we well, talk I about mean, you're just, you're some just, specific players? You just want to, you know, to, to just further go on, on, on what you're kind of going after here. I mean, obviously, you're selling some older guys, some middling guys, like, you know, with those running backs. I'll be, I'll be trying to move, you know, Miles and an older wide receiver kind of together to try to elevate each other's value a little bit. And, and move those as as one unit. Obviously, in your situation, it's a little different. But like, you know, add or add a pick to Miles Sanders and Montgomery, and and try to really get add something big to my to my lineup and go up a tier or two, um, and get a little younger. Um, and then if I need those guys, I'll probably buy somebody else back when I'm my team's back on track. I'll buy some more veterans because uh, as we've gone over. You do this, you break it all down, and then you come back and you can, you, you know, I'm I'm not always in the, hey, sell, every, just keep trying to get picks. Sure, you should keep trying to get picks, but, like, I'm also fine with selling picks to get veterans. And it seems like it's, we're in a time right now in the space that seems like it's e- easier and easier to sell. To uh, buy to veterans. Buy veterans. Um, yeah. But, you know, the guys that you should be then looking for in, in trades are, you know, which I, previous to this week would have been, like guys that I'd be throwing in at the end of trades after I've already kind of maybe won the value battle a little bit, I'd throw in uh, you know guys like Tony and and Christian Watson. That would have been before. Those were guys that were constantly in throw in deals with me to that I'm em. trying to get. Right. Like those are examples of guys that I'd be trying to get. Pacheco would have been in there. Obviously, he may have just taken over for Ceh, so people are probably a little bit more reluctant. But, but the, like but the, players with high the game upsides, score doesn't look that great. So no, but but. It, but he CEH, did look pretty CEH good. He looks really. It, it seemed, he got nothing. Seemed like Pacheco has has maybe taken over possibly. So none of these guys that I'm talking about right now are the best examples. But those were guys before doing and taking over maybe bigger roles were guys high upside guys where the athleticism and the situation you know could be really good. Uh, but right now the value's still low and everybody's a little unsure of them. Those are the guys that I want to you know add to. You know, my like Ramondre last year at at certain parts was a guy that I was trying to throw in a lot of deals. Um, now, right now, you probably can't. But if he would have maybe got middled out with with Harris a little more these last couple of games, he might be a guy that I may try to get in a deal. Uh, but we're looking for you know Kenneth Walker in the beginning of the season before he was playing a whole lot. Like that would have been somebody that I was trying to go after. Now that's obviously a lot more higher end and a lot more capital invested in him. Um, Khalil Herbert there for a little while was somebody that I was trying to get thrown into these deals. Um, just Tra- younger Traylon guys. Traylon right now. Sure. I mean, Traylon. A little bit more expensive. That, but you know, again, a little harder because there's a first associated with that guy recently. Um, Pickens is probably. Uh, again, his val- any of those rookies. But their value's down. Their value's not going anywhere but up from here. Probably. Any of those rookies for sure. If I'm, you know, if I'm going and selling, uh, you know, digs, I'd love to try to get one of those upper end rookie wide receivers and a pick um you know like olave and a first or mm. you know if i'm selling like guy like digs off my team trying to get a good young guy if i'm you know usually one of my first moves with the bigger assets are going to try to find even the guy who's decent and good and young on their team who's just not quite 100 percent proven to the really proven digs and maybe see if i can you know get olave off your team who's been struggling a little bit these last couple of weeks 
do, we know he's to no fault of his own. Um, and the first is, is a big help out, you know, moving forward into the next season because you, you got a starter and, a, you know, another chance at a first round swipe. Another thing when you're going through those bottom six or top six picks, whoever going to be in the playoffs, one of the first I'm going to go through all of their draft picks right away and see it, which guys have doubles in, in rounds and then try to get one of those doubles from them because it's going to be a whole lot easier for them to part with those picks if there's are if they can see that there's hey i'm not going to miss out on these rounds still i'm still going to be getting a pick in every round or hey maybe i only have to skip here and i can send them something a little bit back um so that's that's a part again that i'm you know that's going to be one of the starting points uh for me is hey you got a first and a second you got two firsts and two seconds and you're kind of a winning team right now at your setup well if you want to move forward you certainly don't have to trade me anything but it's a probably a little easier to squeeze the one and two out of them than it is somebody who just has a one and a two for sure because they're still going to be you know picking so it's not the second it's not like oh i gotta sit this draft out now when you're getting the picks from them psychologically or you know however you want to look at that um so um you know i don't know if you guys have any like throw in you know dpj who we talked about the other day he's he's a guy that'd be nico, nico collins, collins would yep. be throwing type of you know younger haven't ascended quite yet guys i mean you know, like a wandale wandale for sure alec pierce alec yep. pierce cooled off a little bit i hate to say it but i guess fucking dj Moore. yeah All right yeah I i'm mean, always i'm always down for buying jacoby myers as well too hair on the older side for for what i'm trying to do but i'm not that david bell David Bell yep. for sure. We talked about that a couple. Here's an weeks interesting ago. one that I that I'm not super in love with, but he's probably super cheap right now. Like, what about like John Mechie? Yeah, I mean, I'm fine yeah. with I'm fine with Mechie. I mean, Elijah hopefully Moore he comes back. Uh, Eli Moore would be Elijah. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with taking a swing on that and get. There's no value left on him for mm-hmm. probably some people. So that's I think that's a really good call. We know that there's talent there. Mm-hmm. It's just been a little weird. They said they're going to move him to the slot and and give him some more opportunities to be that guy because I guess Wilson's been good outside. I, I wouldn't mind throwing th- throwing Algier in there as well, too. I think he's yeah, played I mean, well any, enough to get some thoughts. Any for, of those young running backs, you know, if you could get Rashad White and something else for yeah, something. Yeah, I, I, I think White. You know. It got more expensive, but I think it's, it's still right there to obtain. What about like a Keonta Ingram? I mean that that be uh, those he's, are I think those he, are guys. I think he's now the backup in Arizona. They just caught Eno. Sure, I, but that's a good. Those are guys who, at the end of those trades that I'm doing, Kyle I'm, Phillips. I'm gonna go ahead and and try to like find one or two of those guys while we're doing that, and just keep th- and throw them in the deal and just yeah. see if I can basically get them for fucking free from somebody and like the Kyle Phillips and the uh, Jerome Fords and the you know Ingram getting a little bit more burn and. Uh, run Zamir White's uh, even Spiller right now you know probably yeah. Kyron just all the uh, what the the dude from uh, Maryland the tight end uh, I'm always a, trying to get him in any Quan- trade Conquo yeah he, he a couple of times he's caught a pass he's looked ridiculous out there um, but I'm always trying to grab you know a Bellinger or a you know just a, a tight end just players who guys haven't you know if they're not really up on it and really getting into it like you know, maybe they just picked him in the third or fourth round and they don't really know anything about him and he hasn't done anything. So, hey, yeah, I'll, I'll throw that guy in there. Sure. Yeah. Um, so that's th- those are that's for sure something I'm doing on Damien Harris. Might could be a nice little throw in a little older, but just the value pretty down right now. Sure. McBreezy. McBride. Yeah, he got, he just got a little bump. Um, you know, Christian Kirk would have been one of those guys. Alexander Madison that, thro- that would have been thrown in there. Madison's not bad because there's a there, there's a potential free agent after this year of a free agency and this just seems to always be a fan favorite that people really like so I think there's going to be some excitement when maybe he's quote unquote set free uh, which usually you know doesn't work out super great but I bought him in a couple places last year in just anticipation of getting him for super cheap of that there could be a little bump here and might get some value out of there Jeremy Ruckert Rucker, yeah sure but I mean you guys get the idea um you know, younger, underperforming or younger not playing younger right, guys that that have good potential profiles or that you really like or they're in a good system or you know kind of any of those things. Paris Campbell for years was that guy for me. Always trying to get Paris in in, in deals. Marvin Jones for years before that was always a guy I was trying to get in deals. Um, so um, that's that's kind of really all I got there. Um, 
as far as I mean, we could you get the rest of it is really just comes down to the devils in the details, man. It's all about as much effort as you want to put in and, and just trying to mold this thing to get to a point of where the other side feels good about it. And, you know, that's that's really what the rebuild's going to be all about. And I'm not, it's fucking fun. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm, not if you're losing a bunch of money. It ain't fun. Well, I mean, you're obviously hopefully not doing that. You know, you're you're. you're doing it for a year and then on the next year you're hopefully seeing that come back around and you're 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 moving back up the standings i mean that's yeah that's kind of the, the the goal there and and the alternative is sit there until you get all your guys being too old and all the value falls off and now the rebuild takes a lot longer and you're shitting money for a lot longer that's really the alternative here and i'm not saying you need to always just be rebuilding and just hey everybody on my team's 25 or 26 i'm okay with still going you do need to be a little bit aware of Hey, I'm going to I'm going to try to keep putting a little bit of decent youth on the back half of this team, but I'm okay with Rams in it every once in a while too and just saying fuck them picks. I'm going to go try to win and and get the win this money, Head. bankroll for 3 years and uh try to set they, this thing up. As as shitty as they're playing this year, they fucking won a Super Bowl last year, so. Yeah, well that's what I'm saying. Everybody likes to shit on you right now, but they fucking won a Super Bowl. There's only been like 50 of those motherfuckers. Like that's the goal, right. and not Ever, very, at, and, and even and way less repeaters. So right, yeah, and it's so. There's one last point I want to make here, and it's for the people who have already rebuilt their team and they don't know it. Stop making trades. Like if you have like, what do you mean? If you have like four firsts next year and every single rookie wide receiver already on your team, like you don't need to just sit, just sit and wait. Let those picks accumulate value. Like, you don't have to force the issue. I think people just are addicted to trading. They are. They like, are. they are just addicted to trading. Like, you see that in your leagues. Like, people just can't fucking help themselves because they... I mean, and it's almost like you know, it's almost like keep doubling down against the house to try and make your money back. Like... Well, that's just what people... That's what some people like out of the game, you know? That's you, the why they're in it? Right. That's, yeah, they, they, that's, they just, they're that's the, the game for them. And I under, like the, I view it as kind of three different players. It's it's a guy who never trades and doesn't do a whole lot. Man, I'm working on this fucking show. Is you? I would. You're you're just not a big trader. You like you hold on to your assets. You get who you like and and you guard them pretty heavy. Which is fine. I'm not a I'm Man, not a, I'm I would not be make I would definitely I just don't have time to sit down. Because, you talking about the because time. Because the wheeler and dealer. The trade the, to make a good trade it takes time. Yeah, Big Co will tell you he sent like a million emails. Yeah. Like it takes time. I'm working on this show, so my fantasy teams are suffering because I'm trying to make this show fucking. I'm putting time in on the edit, yeah, and the fucking I said, thumbnail. I texted all this shit. I texted him earlier and I said, "Oh, I picked this guy up off the waiver wire," and he's like, "Oh, good. Who's that guy?" I'm like, "Oh, okay." It was. I mean, I I I guess I'd heard the name, but I didn't know he was a converted quarterback, Tyree Jackson. Oh yeah, got. We got we got Tyree on a bunch of teams. Well, I went and looked out. in the tight end league, and you already had him for sure. <laughs> Well, He's been it, chilling on my IR for. That was well, in that, well, I don't one, know what that has to do with me not making trades. That but. was one of those last year guys you throw on the end of your bench because they're on IR and they're. Well, I was just surprised that, that no one picked him up in the yeah. in this league because it's forty it's, roster, league. forty rosters, and 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 uh, double PPR for the tight ends. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm. He's been on. A, he should be on somebody's team. He's on IR. That He's was on our team. team. I picked well, him up for free. Should have been. Well, already on people's you are team, not there's, there's you, a lot well, of uh, you, well you're in that league oh so. yeah I, for sure we don't you we don't do a whole uh, lot of uh uh waiver wiring in that in that one right well there's not it much it wasn't even the yeah, waiver well, wire. Yeah. i don't think we have any money oh uh, we have we have a lot of money oh we do yeah hmm. <laughs> well the point of that wasn't because i give a shit whether you trade or why you don't trade i was saying that you're not a huge trader by nature you're just not a big if you really wanted to trade you would find ways to trade guys you're you're a more guarded player. There's Big Co who plays the game to fucking wheel and deal. Yeah. That's what he wants to do, and that's how he wants to do it. And then I think there's a middle of the road person who I, I'm getting. I'm getting who I want, and I'm gonna most likely keep him. And but I, you know, I don't mind a trade. I'll if I got a little bit of time, I'll I'll usually I like to keep some feelers out there and and send send some things around and figure out. All right, you know. Who's the guys who's down on value who I like, and then I'm gonna go see if anybody's really down on that value and see if I can get them. Um, so you know that's kind of the way I look at it is, you know that's that that's why those people keep trading. And yeah, you shouldn't just necessarily trade to trade. And if you have four first round picks and a bunch of rookie wide receivers, then 
you don't necessarily need to trade. So don't make a bad trade. Don't mm -hmm. make, don't just trade to trade, but it's, a, I'm fine. If you want to keep pushing, pushing the envelope. And, and if you and have moves. four first round picks next year, you shouldn't make all those picks. Probably. You should probably take one or two and go get you a guy, you know, is good. You should definitely, depending on where they are, but or, you should definitely move those picks around a little bit to gain other assets. And, and maybe you do end up making all of those, all of the actual number of picks, but maybe they're in different spots and you gain other guys to move around a little bit. Or maybe you move up to get a guy. And that's you know. a lot easier said than done. Some leagues it's easy to move around in the draft and other leagues are super tight butthole and it's really hard to get an injury. Well, that's trade. why it's beneficial in your rookie draft to have like a slow clock, you know. No, you got to have, I need a day at least. Right. And when you get on the clock, sit there for a minute. Like, sit there for an hour, two hours, three hours. Like, you don't have to sit I, the, there the, the whole thing day. I like, the thing I like to do in, in rookie draft is say, hey, it, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. If I don't have a trade by 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm going to pick. Yeah, I mean, I don't you hate got, that you, you got to have to. I feel like putting a putting a deadline on those things kind of gets some deals done in that, in that sense. It certainly can. More times than not, if you sit there, though, someone's going to be like, hey, you want to trade me this pick? And then I was in a draft. A trade I was in a draft or, one time where a guy literally sat. There was there was no clock, and the guy sat on the clock until somebody have traded a him a pick. You gotta have a. I'm clock, not in that. It should be like 24 hours. I'm not in the league anymore. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have a clock. That's bullshit. The commissioner was a giant pansy. So hmm. I don't know if you can say pansy anymore. You're canceled, pal. In the peach shirt. <laughs> It's definitely not salmon. If he can Peach. say water, I can say salmon. Oof. No, you can't say salmon. Yeah. No. Well, he can say water. That's fine. That's dialect. You're just fucking saying it wrong. <laughs> You're just an asshole. <laughs> um, all right, let's get the, let's get out of here. Let's end this thing. We're getting the FF out of here. I love saying that. Start to talk about how we draft teams. That's not what we're doing. We're rebuilding, damn it. What are you rebuilding the rookie draft? This is the best place to do it. I'm just trying to get us out of here. <laughs> All right. Where are you like, trying to go? You got somewhere cool to go? You didn't like, subscribe, or anything? No. Yeah, do that. Whatever. So sick. You do have to ask people right off the rip. Because they'll be like, oh, right. Yeah. And they'll hit the like oh, button. Yeah. That's never worked for me. So if I like your shit, I'm just going to subscribe to it. Every single. Video. Why do we do this every fucking episode? Every episode, we do this. Every video on YouTube wouldn't ask you to like and subscribe at the very beginning if it didn't fucking work. I'm, I'm sure it works for some people. It works for a lot of people. Right. The people spending all day on YouTube. <laughs> they have more free time than I do, apparently. Apparently. They have free time to think about. Oh, hey, you did say you just asked me to like. Maybe I'll give it a like. All right, like, subscribe. Um, yeah, download. please get me off of um, this fucking podcast. iTunes, Jesus Spotify, Christ. give us five star review. Well, we'll enter you in a contest, get a free t shirt. And uh, that one. What else? What did you forget? Oh, uh, Patreon.com Patreon, slash Patreon, the FF Dynasty. Dynasty. <laughs> <laughs> get you a little five dollar holler. Yeah, you ask. Join access up with the pleasure. Chester's. Not a ton of rebuilding over on our Discord channel. Just want to throw that out there. A little bit, but also we're just winning. He doesn't have anywhere to go. Now I'll just stalling. Now I'll just leave. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go pee. So, all right. Appreciate y'all. Number one or number two. Peace. <laughs>